Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to Julie's Orchids. Today, we're going to repot this Cattleya Alliance orchid you see sitting before you. We're gonna take it out of its bark, and we're gonna transition it into pumice, my preferred setup. Uh, we'll tell a little bit of story about this particular Cattleya and why you haven't seen me do much with Cattleyas on my channel. So be sure to like and subscribe, and let's repot this. So this is that cross, and I've had this one for quite some time. It was one of the first ones I've got, and when I got it, I immediately took it home and repotted it, and immediately set it back, and you can see how far set back it was from these two. Uh, since then, it's slowly recovered, and I think I finally have the nerve to try to repot this. Why? Because the last one to Three new growths that put off are putting out root nubbins. So this is the perfect time to take this plant out of bark and put it into pumice. And we got our supplies here. So I am going to use my water bath technique uh, to drop the large pumice. So this is seven to 20 millimeter size pumice. Uh, in case I need to trim any of the rhizome, I've got some dragon's blood, and of course my pre-sterilized scissors. I've got a tray to catch the dirty stuff, the old bark, um, in an attempt not to get this all over the house, because I do work at the kitchen table. Um, so yeah, this is what we're going to need today. Pretty straightforward. We're going to take that out of the pot, hopefully not kill any of the new um, root nubbins, get one of my original cattleyas into pumice, finally. Now, this is Sunday morning. Um, so yesterday was Saturday, and I purposefully did not water this plant um, because I'm going to just tip it over, and hopefully the loose bark on the top will fall away. I'm um, just untwisting some ties I had at one point in time to hold up this little back end of the plant here. This is a pretty vigorous grower once you get it back on its feet. Um, but yeah, with the Catley Alliance type orchids, don't immediately take these home and rush to unpot them. Wait for that new root growth to come uh, because they shed their roots with any little bit of fiddling with them. So you really have to wait for the new growths to, to put out the new roots. And they do that, this plant, once the new growth is pretty well almost fully matured. And I think I need a bigger tray. <laughs> like I said, we're just going to slowly kind of try to loosen some of the bark pieces off the top. And now this plant's been in this pot for a good long while, about two years. So... You can see it's made a lot of nice root growth down into the pot. So we're just, like I said, trying to get these bigger pieces off the top here to hopefully start loosening some of the stuff deeper down. And you can see we've got root growth here. I could have started a little bit earlier, but um, just couldn't get to it. So yeah, this is my struggle with these plants it's timing. <laughs> Timing, always timing. Okay, so what I did was, is I went outside, gave it a good squeeze, turned it upside down, gave it a few thwacks on the bottom of the pot. And while I was doing that, I was able to pull that right on out. So yeah, that's a pretty solid um, plant in the pot. And that'll just be a matter of teasing the bark out. Now, this bark is still pretty wet, which is interesting because I haven't watered this plant uh, since the Saturday before last. And the reservoir was empty, but that tells me quite a bit. Now, I'm not going to be super pedantic about pulling 
absolutely every last piece of bark off, but I am going to get the most of the bark out. And this is going to take a pretty good while. So I might check back in um, a bit later as I get a bit more of this bark out and the roots a bit more cleaned up and see what they are looking like deep inside here. Um, and actually they're looking pretty good in there. Now this was the back end, this is the original part of the plant that I got. And I set those way back and grew these two little dinky things. And then it's kind of slowly recovered from there. I ended up getting spider mites. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't have luck with these plants. So I've managed to pull the rocks out at the bottom of the roots, which is making it a lot easier to get some of this bark out from beneath at least the back here, which will slowly start to loosen up the other roots. And you can see the roots down here are really surprisingly healthy, um, which is disappointing because I know these are all going to croak off and these new roots are going to replace them because Cattleya roots are pretty sensitive, particularly with media changes and things of that nature, which we're, we're getting ready to change it a whole lot for this plant. Well, we've gotten that um, cleaned up pretty good. And I, I'm really shocked to see at just how pretty darn good looking this root system is. I mean, some of these in here, they look a bit yellowy, but they're still squeezing pretty firmly. Now there are bits and pieces here and there that are, are dead. So I am gonna go through uh, with the shears and trim up some roots. And to be honest with you, I might get pretty radical and trim up a bunch of roots. I know I broke several. Um, I heard them go. This one, I know I've, I've damaged it there. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, sacrifice to the gods the roots. But we've got more roots coming, so I'm going to be hopeful. <laughs> and, well, let's start trimming. Now I've already pre-sterilized these scissors, so they're good to use, but you, you want to sterilize your scissors. Like I said, I'm cutting that long one off, even though it has a growing root tip because I damaged it in the repotting process. Uh, this one like here also I've damaged. Now this one here has patches that are alive and patches that are dead. So I'm going to cut it off here. This one here I very obviously have killed. And I've broken this one there. Well, this is something interesting that happened as I was um, loosening up the roots from each other. Uh, the plant has popped into two pieces. Um, wasn't expecting that. This one's got new roots coming. So we now have two plants. Oh, and there's a nice eye right there. So huh, this has put a little kink in the train here. So we're going to get couple of pots. I'm going to pop these up and we'll now have two of these plants. Each one of these plants needs a little bit more trimming up on the roots. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tidy up what I've already mess I've made and then we'll come back and we'll address each one of these two plants now individually. Okay so as I mentioned I wasn't really quite expecting that the plant was going to break up into two parts. Um, so we're going to address these now as two separate plants and we're going to plant them up in two different pots. Now some of these roots back here, like this one's okay to right about there. That one's not good there at all. Um, and some of these are good. Now 
I know that the roots that are here that I leave on this plant are going to die. This one's the one that's dead further down. So I'm not going to feel bad about cutting these roots because this one's got new roots coming. Um, it also has some older, longer roots. And well, this is my luck with this genre of plant. <laughs> so right, that one's dead from there down. I'm also going to try to pull this papery bit off. Uh, no, I'm going to leave that put. And yeah, this one's coming off. That one's dead. This one's dead right at the beginning. And this is this one right here. So what I'm doing is I'm just giving each one of these individual roots a squeeze. And if they're firm, I'm leaving them. If they have anywhere that's squishy, I'm cutting them. All right, we're going to call that good. I'm not going to worry about these little bits of bark. We are going to try to just maybe pull some of these papers off. I'm not the best about remembering to do this. And yep, so these are just going to stay put. <laughs> That's pretty good there. And again, I want to point out the uh, damage, spider mite damage to these. Um, Yeah, all right, let's get our water ready. Okay, so I'm gonna want the plant about here in the pot at about this depth, um, maybe a little bit deeper. So, cause you can see it's kind of, kind of a growing, rising nature. And we're just using the water as a buffer to protect the roots that are existing. Even though I know that doing this, those roots are likely still gonna die. But we've got the brand new roots coming on this new growth. So now we're just going to let this water drain out and see how the pumice is falling amongst the roots. And by doing this and giving it a little bit of a shake, it allows the pumice floating in the water to just sort of settle amongst the roots a little bit easier. And you can see that that's going pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with this. So we're just gonna let the water back into the pot a bit. Gently, it'll fill back into those holes some. So I'm just gonna pull the plant up a little bit out of the pumice because when I put it down, it dropped down in there. And again, we're just gonna continue filling in around the roots. Now at this point in time, we've kind of hit the critical mass of where the water is doing me no good anymore because I don't have a bowl wide and deep enough for my pot. So we're just gonna let the water drain out. And as you saw, the roots are nicely settling into no air gaps. That water bath has let everything fall nicely down in. There's nothing special about the water. I've got just plain reverse osmosis water in here. So I'm happy with that. We'll move this off to the side. And you can see it's almost self-supporting itself. So I'm just gonna gently come in and fill around. What I might do is put some just regular stones, these stones here, along the back, because you can see that the rhizome is creeping up. 
And this will allow the water back here by this part of the rhizome to drain off really quickly and hopefully help avoid some possible root rot or rotting of the rhizome. You try to stick some underneath. And that looks good to me right there. So I'm happy with that. Now I'm just going to continue filling in the pumice on the rest of the plant. I'm being really careful right here because that's a root lemon coming out there. And I think that looks good. So we're going to top this off with some decorative river stone. And I'm going to go grab the stone. So I was gifted these pretty gray pebbles. Uh, we'll give these a go. Lynn at Lynn Brooks Orchids has gifted me these. As we know, she's moving on to Thailand. And this is just to help kind of keep from having a super dry top layer. And oh, I don't know that I like the color of these with my pumice. Oh. Yeah, I don't think I like the color of those with my pumice, but they'll work. So now I need to make a tag for this, but I've got the holes to the back here, and I pretty well have got the plant lined up with the holes to the back. Um, I am going to get myself a skewer, and I'm going to stake this to the skewer so it's not wobbly. So I'm just reusing some of that um, florist wire that was holding the plant together earlier. And I know that there's a root right there, but I'm right next to it. That should do there. And I'm just going to kind of, that didn't really work as planned. That's better. All right, well, that's one of them done. Nice and secured in the pot. So this is our other one and what we've got left of it. Now, what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to cut the rhizome right here because these are the oldest bits that I set back and then grew these. And then these have all since grown since then. I think if I cut this old bit off because they're quite burnt, um, it'll still be okay. And if not, well, this will be another learning example on what not to do with Cattleya type orchids <laughs> here on Julie's orchids. So you see right here at this join, it's already kind of a little bit wonk wonky there. I'm going to cut it right there. But first, I'm going to cut these last little bits of roots that are on here off. And yeah, I'm going to give it a cut right there. And this also gives us a good opportunity to look for fusarium. Now, you can see that that's all nice and green. There's no purple ring around it. And because I've cut this and this is a fresh cut, I'm going to take our dragon's blood. And just give it a little touch on there. And we'll let that dry. And that'll give me a moment to tidy up here and get ready for the next repotting. What am I going to do with this? Uh, There's an eye right there. I could pot it up and give it a go. Uh, I might post it as a free thing on on Facebook. So let's put some dragon's blood on this one. And if someone wants to come by today and pick it up, they can. If not, I'm going to bin this because this is the oldest part of the plant. It does have an eye. <clears throat> I don't want to mess with it. Now, yes, I'm going to use the same water that I used before. 
I'm not using the same pot. I have a clean pot, but it's the same size pot. Uh, this orchid should go back just fine into this pot because it broke in two and we trimmed it down. So I'm just refilling the pot. Now, in regards to the dragon's blood, you could use dragon's blood or you could use cinnamon. Uh, I've seen some people use hot candle wax. I don't know that I'm too keen on the hot candle wax. I've not done it myself. Uh, seems, you know, cinnamon's readily available if you can't get dragon's blood. Uh, and they both work fine. And cinnamon and dragon's blood both have some um, natural antiseptic properties to it. So I would recommend those over candle wax. All right, we've got that filled up. Now, as you can see, I've gone ahead and cleaned up the drying sheets off many of these. Leave that there. I can say one thing, this plant is a heavy sap producer, um, pretty sticky. And that's probably why pests like it so much. Um, but we've got all sorts of new little roots coming. And I just sort of want to pull these off gently. I'm being pretty gentle about it because, yeah, I know there's roots coming right there. Um, but look at all the new roots coming here. Now I'm trying to gently remove these. But I'm not going to go. I'm not going for those. No, 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 no. Uh, and I say it's probably good enough. Now, how am I going to put this one in the pot? Because we've got two directions of growth. I guess technically I could have cut the uh, rhizome differently, but I'm I'm pretty happy with my, how I cut it. This has got one, two, three directions of growth. I could technically cut it again here uh, because we'd have one, two, three one, two, three, and everyone's putting out new roots. But I'm, I'm leaving it as is. Um, now I've got the holes to the back. And how am I going to put this? Well, we've got two directions of growth. And I think if I put it smack in the middle of the pot, a little bit towards the back, but smack in the middle, about right there, that should do it. And let's see how we're doing. Looks like things are going to start falling in quite nicely. So we'll just go back to adding in more pumice. From the looks of it, I'm going to need <laughs> to get more of this size pumice before We'll be able to do any more repottings after this because this plant, these two repots here are using more than I thought it would. And I think we're probably at that level where we can um, let the water drain out and then just finish filling with pumice and hope for the best. Cause like I said, I evidently need a bigger bowl. Got a little air pocket right there. Okay, now I would like this a little bit less deep in the pot so we're just gently going to lift it up a bit and that's a bit more where i want it in the pot so i'm going to put some rocks there and i'm just going to slide a rock right under there for support. There we go. Now we can just finish off throwing some of the pumice in around. And I am going to top this off with uh, river rock. And I am going to use that silver river rock, even though I'm not too super keen on how it looks. Um, but I'm out of the more natural look looking river rock that I get.
actually no, I just decided to use these river stones because I like this look better than um, the other one. Sorry about that. And again, this is just to help kind of keep the top layer of pumice from getting dry. And I think if I stick you right there and give you a little support right there, that should do it. Ah, there you go. Well, that's pretty stable in the pot. Now I would have liked this one to be a little bit less close to the side, um, but we'll just have to deal with how it grows. But yeah, there's that one done. Let's clean everything up and uh, see what we got. And there you have it, two for the price of one repot and transition into pumice. So we'll zoom in on these and we can see that these new growing root tips are well situated to grow down into the pumice. And what roots they have left are going to die. But that's okay because we've got new roots getting ready to head down into the pumice. Now I hope this has helped you guys. If you get anything in the Catley Alliance and you're itching to repot it, don't repot it until you see new root nubbins. They will abort all of their old roots. They have very cranky roots, so you need to let them grow into their new substrate as opposed to like Phalaenopsis, that as long as they've got growing root tips, their roots are fairly adaptable. These plants are not. I severely set this one back and it's taken two full years to get it back this healthy enough for me to think, yeah, we'll give it a go. Uh, so there you go. Um, Hopefully I've recovered this one well enough that this repot and accidental split, I didn't mean to, it just fell apart. I'm unsure if it was originally two plants. I don't remember when I bought it. I think it was just the one. Um, but you've got two plants. You've got spider mite damage. This poor thing has been through a lot with me. And I hope I've got it figured out. And now she's going to grow down into the pumice. Now, I, I know that Catlias will do good with this media. I've seen other growers grow them in this, so I'm not worried about the pumice. To me, I'm worried about some of the root nubbins on this one were a bit long, and I'm like, ooh, did I wait too long? Well, we'll find out to see if Julie has figured Catlias out or not. Um, definitely going to be much more eyeballing the new additions to the family that we've already have. And there you have it, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. A subscribe would be great. And everyone have a fabulous day.